And welcome back to the show. For years, the Salvation Army has supported New Yorkers through the most catastrophic of times before, during, and after disaster strikes. Now, as we reach the end of the summer, New York is entering its annual hurricane season. And during its time, it's most important more than ever to prepare for any possible scenario. And joining us now, we're sharing with us as the Deputy Director for Operations of Emergency Services at the Salvation Army, Iwana Opris. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, let me talk a little bit about this, because as we're here during this time of the year, of course, all of our eyes and our ears are paying attention uh, to the potential of what can happen. Uh, and as we were saying a little earlier, you know, it's not as bad as it's been, but when it does happen and disaster strikes, uh, you got to go right on the front lines. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, to your point about when it happens, you have to go. Um, we really, um, we always advise that everyone is prepared before there's even a storm on the horizon, because that is that that key step in making sure that you and your family are as safe as possible if it does happen here. Yeah, and one of the things I think we talk about in New York is that uh, we have this resilience, if we will. We always think that we can just ride through it, and, and Hurricane Sandy and some other things have really taught us that that's not necessarily so. Give us a little bit of insight as to how can we be prepared and what, how should we prepare uh, during a time like this? Absolutely. Um, so the first step is really to have a plan. Um, and have that plan ironed out and ready to go well before the storm. Um, that plan can include things like the supplies that you need to have in your home or you need to have if you have to evacuate your home, which I can cover in more depth, um, and also how you are going to evacuate if needed. Um, do you have um, somebody to stay with? Are you going to be um, going to an evacuation shelter? How will you get there? Um, similarly, having critical documents reviewed and backed up ahead of the storm. That's something that, you know, if you are impacted, um, excuse me, if you are impacted, um, you will need to be able to access those. Um, and if power is out, you know, having backup copies, et cetera. So there are a variety of steps that you and your family can take and should be thinking about well ahead of time. Yeah. What are some of the most common mistakes people make when, uh, when addressing hurricanes and storms in the season? Oh man, common mistakes. I think that um, it's really that lack of preparedness or maybe thinking it can't happen to you or it won't impact you. Um, I think we've seen um, historic flooding um, in this area yeah. and both um, with, with Hurricane Ida um, and then Hurricane Sandy. And the reality is that you can be impacted even if it's not directly, um, if there are extended power outages, if um, water is, is out, um, you and your family do need to have um, the resources available to independently care for yourself. First responders, organizations, we're always going to be there to help. Um, but having those supplies on hand can really, really make that process easier and safer for you. And let's talk about those supplies. What are some of the things that people need to have? Uh, because uh, many people think that I've got it already. But the fact is, is that uh, you don't. And you need you have, need to have the right things uh, for a time that may come. So what are some of the essentials that you're finding that people should have in their home? Um, you, in order to shelter in place, you'll need a two-week supply of food and water. And that plan for that, taking into account the needs of your family members. So for example, if you have children um, or elderly family members, um, they may have different or specialized needs. Um, also, if you have pets, um, similar situation, um, you're gonna wanna have um, your medications um, on hand, um, your, an emergency supply, a first aid kit, um, items to help you shelter and place in your home can include trash bags, sanitation items, um, your personal hygiene items, but also bleach, um, wipes to keep your home sanitary. Um, you'll want to have an emergency power source um, or light source. So that can include power for your, um, for your devices um, as external uh, kind of battery packs. Um, and also having a flashlight, a headlamp, um, matches, lighters to start a fire um, if needed. Um, and then also uh, some safety items like a fire extinguisher, which you should really have all year, but make sure it's not expired, um, tools to turn off any utilities, um, and then also having your important documents and your mementos really um, in a safe place. And if you do live in a, in a multi-story home, making sure those items are not in the basement, because we have seen that when a basement floods, individuals often lose so much more than they thought they would. Yeah. 
And so as we're looking right now, we understand that this can happen just at about any time. Uh, and when it happens at any time, people really are scrambling and trying to find themselves, uh, whether it's the necessary supplies or, you know, just access. Uh, as we look and we see these things occur, uh, talk to me about your organization and how um, you guys are really looking ahead to making sure that people are well taken care of. Yes, um, and we, we really are always looking ahead. So the Salvation Army is, is present in all communities. Um, we have um, core community centers that are active in assisting people year round that turn on to meet additional disaster needs whenever that takes place. We also have our emergency services team um, that we are always preparing for the possibility of a disaster. We have resources that we stage ahead of time, and then we move immediately to um, provide resources to the community, but also to coordinate with our core community centers to make sure that um, individuals who are impacted are getting what they need, and that the assistance we provide is relevant to the communities that we're serving. Um, we really are positioned in a great place to help people because we are in communities year round. We're used to working with the community. We're trusted within the communities that we work with. And anyone can approach us at any time after a storm, at any time during the year. Um, and we're always here for you, whether you need assistance today or six months from now. So that's something that we're always striving and able to offer. You're in front of the camera now, but the truth is you've been out on the front lines when we were talking about uh, hurricanes. I know that you're very active in Hurricane Ida and played an important part in uh, helping people navigate through that. Give me your uh, insider view as to what it was like during the time of Ida and what New Yorkers really had to deal with. It was a, a, a very challenging and I would go for a safe traumatic incident for, for the, the people who were affected um, and also for the communities that were affected. Um, after a hurricane takes place, so much is impacted. People's homes are impacted, people's social groups and neighborhood, um, businesses in the neighborhood. So um, I went from, from planning our response at home, um, planning the operational aspects to actually being on the ground, distributing supplies, um, being able to talk to folks um, who had been impacted and who were starting to store out what the next steps would be. And that is such, no matter how prepared you are, that's always a monumental process for folks. Um, and you, I'm so grateful to all the individuals who are willing to share, to share their stories with me. Um, and also, I'm, I'm always, and during Ida as well, I was so impressed with just the resilience that um, individuals have in the way that they help each other in their communities. Um, so it's always something that's a, it's a very humbling experience. Yeah. We talked about how to prepare your home. I want to take a chance to talk to about business owners because they're also deeply impacted by that as well. And sometimes uh, they're very much more uh, impacted because uh, millions of dollars have been lost during hurricanes for businesses. Um, talk to us about a business owner. If I'm a business owner and I'm watching right now, uh, what do I need to know in order to be prepared for when a potential hurricane or disaster strikes? Um, having a plan is just as crucial for a business as it is for a homeowner or, you know, any, any resident. Um, so there's a few considerations that businesses may have that a homeowner wouldn't. So one of the things that you can do ahead of time is put together an emergency plan. Um, understand um, if, there, if, you're, if your business is impacted um, physically or in terms of utilities being cut off, et cetera, are there any mitigation steps that you can take to keep operations going? Is it possible to make some type of work from home plan for your staff? Is it possible to keep any type of operation going um, or move to another location? Understand what your options are there. Um, you're also gonna wanna plan for your staff safety um, and plan for any scheduling or any needs. That's, a, that's kind of an initial step um, but understand how um, how you might be impacted if your community is impacted, but you're not directly. Um, you're also going to want to, um, if you're a business owner, um, understand um, the um, insurance you have um, or any resources that will be available to you after the storm. If you are impacted, making sure that you document everything thoroughly, um, document any damages. As a business owner, just as a homeowner, have before pictures of everything that you know is, is critical to your operation um, and, and the, um, the actual electronics, um, the machinery that you have. And then take photos afterwards, immediately after the storm, before you begin any cleanup process. 
Um, you're going to need those for filing for insurance. And if you purchase anything um, for replacement, make sure you keep receipts of absolutely everything. Um, yeah. And when we talk about businesses, I think they are, you know, uh, one of the premier, well, I'll go back. When we talk about businesses, I think one of the things that happened with them is that they think that, you know, listen, we can ride this out too. And I think a lot of times it's only until after the fact do businesses really understand the impact that a potential storm has uh, in terms of not just wiping them out, but the time frame in terms of recovery. What were you seeing with boots on the ground in terms of recovery time for businesses who've been out there and been impacted by Ida? I, so from what I saw there, it, it, there were really a variety of challenges that businesses were facing. Um, so not only was it the physical impact, um, but it could take longer for a business to recover even once the physical um, impacts start to be addressed. So for example, cleanup, replacement of items, et cetera. But the, the reality is that within a community, the individuals who are working and supporting that business, they're also being impacted by the storm. Um, so you may have been impacted by a business, but your employees also have been. So that's something to, to factor in. And it's something that we saw in Ida businesses and their employees and people trying to work together to figure out what the next steps would be. And then of course, there's the, um, the assistance that becomes available after disasters that tends to be, it's not an immediate process. Um, so that's something that owners have to take into account. Yeah. Well, Iwan, it's been great talking to you and thank you for the work that you're doing, really helping New Yorkers navigate through some of the toughest times. Uh, when you talk about Sandy, Ida, uh, we know the effects and we know that uh, assistance is greatly needed. The Salvation Army definitely on the ground to help those out there. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. And um, our, we're always working to get um, information to the public as well. Um, so if you would like to, to know more about our services that are available now or post-disaster, um, you can find us at salvationarmyny.org or on social media platforms um, at Salvation Army NY. And we're putting out videos as well um, on various platforms about preparedness with full list of resources. So if you're looking to get your family prepared, we have that full scope um, available right now. We're coming to you. All righty, one again for our viewers, if you missed that, yes, you can catch them on social media at Salvation Army NY and definitely their website at SalvationArmy.org. Well, listen, we got more show. Don't go anywhere. I should say SalvationArmyNY.org. Uh, don't go anywhere. We got more show. Open continues coming up right after this.